Hi, let's keep my morning blog video. One of the things I was asked is why do I consider battery storage so important as opposed to normal grid tied PV systems? Because people say, well, we can get benefits of it, and some countries are giving a feed in tariff. But there's a serious problem on its way. And that is, PV systems are cheap. There's huge areas they can produce in power, which is fantastic, don't get me wrong. But there's a massive problem. As I was explaining on another video, um, for example, in South Australia, some days their entire power for the entire state of South Australia is produced on photovoltaic cells, feed-in tariff, micro-generation, the whole set. So you've now got, what's the utility? The, the, the generators are turning around, the turbines are whizzing around, but they've got a problem. When they're going to be, there's no load, there's no power flow. So the voltages come up, the, the transformers adjust themselves and everything else, the power factor correction in the, in the substations, everything adjusts itself. The voltages will have to adjust because the voltage comes, so it will drop down. And this thing is whizzing around, doing absolutely nothing, of course, costing a lot of money in fuel, but not getting any benefit. Suddenly, suddenly a cloud comes across some area, or you get a thunderstorm, comes in quite quickly, bump, it's all down. The system, everything stopped producing in, a, in an area, say, for example, one area, the whole area stopped producing. Suddenly, the utility is going to want to pull on the utility. Utilities that running, trying to run low, trying to save money, and suddenly this demand. So either the utility can't cope and it will cut out until it can then cope, or it's, the voltage is going to drop and it's going to come back up again. It's a huge problem. It's called grid stability. And as we get more and more of these massive solar fields, the more of the stability problem is going to come. So storage is the, is the answer. You know, and I, I believe eventually all, all systems will be storage because no choice. Because there's no stability, you need stability. You can't have this up and down, up and down. We pull power, we let power out because things can't change. So the stability may be in the means of micro storage or mass storage. So you're going to get areas where you're going to need mass storage, container, containerization batteries. I think it's very important to give stability when there's no load on the grid, the utility can charge the batteries and they can use their power and they can feed into the batteries. And when the grid, the sudden demand, they can pull for the batteries. And that way, you're gonna get some stability. Um, and it's not gonna have the, 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 the utility, the generators up and down, up and down. And you also got other things. You, know, you may end up with things going out of frequency, you know, you're at 50 hertz or some America, some country 60 hertz, the Philippines 60 hertz. So you're gonna have maybe frequency stability, but, from experience, the frequency stability is not normally the issue because they've got long cables. It's more voltage, and the voltages are a big problem, um, going up and down, up and down. And you know, you suddenly you, you could end up one minute you've got 280 volts if everyone's suddenly come off load, and the next minute it could be crashing to 100 volts on a 230 volt supply. It's possible. It could go worse. All possible. So unless you have some sort of stability. And I know in Australia they, and, and Africa, they have a lot of what they call swirl lines, which is a single wire, one wire, which is, uh, and it's earth ground return. That is massive, massive problem trying to get stability on those, those things. Huge problem. They use, I've, I've seen them in uh, Mongolia and these things running, running right through the, the, the countryside for hundreds of kilometers. And you've got wires running hundreds of kilometers and you tap off a transformer every so often and put your ground as you return. Um, you know, they're a big problem getting stability on these things. Somebody that pulls the power further down, it's a bit, you know, and as it gets further on, there's less and less voltages, uh, less and less voltage. So it's, a, it's an issue. But the main problem, the main problem, what I think, and, and I'm, I know because I can see it, is grid stability, grid stability. I know Australia is trying to address it, and they put in their micro, on this, on the, now on the new hybrid inverter part of the regulation, is to allow the uh, state to allow the government or the, the utility to switch on and suddenly export that power from a micro and it's a mandatory requirement in, in a lot of Australia now so it's an important point I'm sure other I'm sure maybe in in South Africa uh, ESCOM will probably get onto this but ESCOM 
is going to have the same problem because I see all these shopping malls, these massive shopping malls with grid, grid inverters and other utilities around the world. Um, UK less of a problem. Reason why is because UK don't have much sun. We get some generation. The UK's probably got more to do with wind turbines because a lot of the power is coming off wind turbine. Again, if the sun is a drop in the wind, but again, it's pretty UK is windyish place, especially in the North Seas and stuff. So less of a problem than other countries. Certainly, countries where they've got a massive amount of PV infrastructure will have this issue. So I hope that's interesting. Um, you know, keep watching the vlogs. Um, I keep doing them. And we'll talk about other subjects. If there's anything you want me to discuss, I'm quite happy to just drop me a message. Thank you.